Welcome, and thank you for joining me. I'm Michael Boss, the Dean of Career and Technical Education at Mesa Community College. This session is titled The Language of CTE, and we'll be discussing SIP codes, SOC codes, and gainful employment. For a lot of folks, career and technical education is complicated. Uh, as you see here, I've got a, a smattering of news story headlines and data and graphs that we might commonly see here in the district, uh, some initiatives, and the landscape of CT is fairly complex. Our students trust us to make it simple. So the learning objectives for today are to make sure that everyone has a little bit of a background as far as the history of CTE, and they understand the terminology associated with SIP codes, SOC codes, and gainful employment. Career technical education has its roots back nearly about a century with the Smith-Hughes Act of 1917. At the time, the country was newly industrialized with a lot of automation happening, and so the regular workforce was finding itself more and more out of employment, especially with uh, younger workers who had yet to acquire any job skills. So the Smith-Hughes Act incentivized the opportunity for folks to gain a career in technical education. They called it vocational skills. Uh, one of the problems with this act, however, is it really focused on uh, and sometimes tracked people into low-income jobs, and uh, we found that minorities in general were tracked into those lower-paying jobs. The Smith-Hughes Act uh, basically got replaced by the career, I'm sorry, the Carl Perkins Vocational Act of 1984, and it really tried to distinguish itself um, as something different than vocational education. So you see in this table, uh, you have some uh, information on what vocational education was, which was really about training skills, and what career technical education is, which is really about uh, having high-level rigorous academic programs that focus on knowledge, skills, and abilities to perform certain uh, careers or jobs out in the workforce. Uh, it's important to know who our customers are and what they want, and at a college we serve two primary populations. One, our students, who really want to align their talents and strengths with a career that makes sense, and employers who are looking for a qualified workforce to meet their industry demands. What both these populations have in common is that they both want to make more money. Now, the reasons why students might choose a college or uh, a college degree are described right here. Uh, number one is they want to be able to get a better job. They also might want uh, specific training for a career. And then finally, all that adds up to being able to make more money. So here we get into SIP codes and SOC codes. So I like to say it's SIPs and SOCs, not SIPs and SOCs. So SIP is the classification of instructional program. It's basically the way we codify any academic program so that it makes sense to academia. So if we were looking uh, at the ability to transfer programs uh, between a two-year and four-year program, we'd look first at SIP code. Uh, if the SIP codes are aligned, then likely it's trained the same sort of content uh, and there might be an opportunity for transfer. Uh, SIP code also identifies uh, the types of graduates that we're putting out into the workforce. So each academic program of study can only have one SIP code, and that SIP code is aligned with the types of graduates we are reporting. Uh, it's also aligned with the financial aid that students are receiving so that they can attend that program. So that's part of the supply side of what the federal government is looking at uh, when we have SIP codes. So when they make an investment in students, the expectation is they're graduating certain programs, uh, and then eventually that will provide a return on investment for those federal dollars that are given for financial aid. Um, and that's different than SOC codes. So uh, the standard occupational classification, or the SOC system, really talks about the world of work. And it's uh, not 
not really concerned with the educational system, but really a classification system of, of all types of jobs. So when the federal government is looking at the demand side, uh, then they're looking at, you know, how many workers are in certain jobs, uh, is there a workforce gap in that area, and this is really where salaries are derived. So if we were to do a economic impact study of our programs, we would look at what SOC codes are we preparing the graduates of our students to enter into. So literally the second after they graduate, they go from a SIP code into a potential SOC code. Uh, so our academic programs have uh, can have more than one SOC code, but only one SIP code. So again, uh, as far as the required elements of occupational programs go at MCC, each of our certificates and degrees has one identified SIP code, and uh, each uh, SIP code may have one or more SOC codes. And these need to be thoughtfully scrubbed down and limited to those likely next step career opportunities as a result of completing the occupational program of study. And we also need to offer a clear sequence. So where do you find this information? Well, you could go to the Maricopa uh, CCTA site and you could search. Uh, we'll do that here in just, just a second. Uh, I will also show you how to navigate from your individual program page. So just bear with me and I'll go over here. So here we are on that CCTA page, and I'll search alteration for alteration specialist and see what I can find. And here we have uh, at Mesa Community College, the major is 5556, and I could click on that to find more information. And up here, you'll see a SIP code. Uh, in this case, it's 521. 802 and a SOC code which is 13 1022. So, the heck of it, I'm just kind of curious to see what SIP code that is. So, I can go in here and create another search bar and we'll find that for an alteration specialist, we have SIP coded it as the uh, a merchandising and buying operations. Uh oh. That doesn't really sound like someone who alters clothes, so perhaps we need to make some changes there. Uh, let's go back to that other part where it talked about SOC code and just see what sort of job we are preparing people for in this particular discipline. And again, I'll go and type that in a Google search here and see what that finds for me. And on ONET here, it says 131022 is wholesale and retail buyers except farm products. Again, another OO moment. So it's incredibly important that uh, we have the right SIP codes and SOC codes uh, so that we're transparent with our academic partners and with the U.S. Department of Higher Education as far as what we are training our students to do when we take financial aid money. And also that we are clearly identifying the right jobs that uh, students can expect and they can go here and navigate to find uh, salary information and other knowledge, skills, and abilities that they might need to acquire to go into that particular role. So let's go back into our... Uh, and I'm going to show you maybe one other way to navigate there. Uh, you can go to the Mesa Community College homepage and search by programs and degrees, program name, and I know that alteration specialist is part of fashion merchandising, so I'll click here. And on this area, I could go down and find alteration specialist and click on the course sequence, which will tell us the sequence information. Again, I get that academic plan code here. But if I go all the way to the bottom, I'll see here's that uh, Maricopa Community College program website, which takes me right back to the same place that had the SIP codes and SOC codes. All right, so let's uh, go out of there for a moment, and we'll go back to our presentation.
one right here. Okay, perfect. So gainful employment. So now that we understand what SIP codes and SOC codes are, we can talk about gainful employment. And this is a uh, set of regulations that is designed to protect students from becoming burdened by student loan debts, uh, debts that they cannot repay. So uh, this uh, regulation was enacted in 2010, and it's become progressively more rigorous over the years. And we basically need to comply uh, if you want to have access to federal student financial aid. And a big uh, thing to note here is we really do need to demonstrate a mass of graduates, uh, likely 10 or more, to, to be competitive with other institutions out there. We'll, we'll go into that in more detail here in just a minute. And uh, here's another area where uh, this is Springfield uh, news leader. And it's just saying here that there's some states and systems that are uh, looking at the need to graduate at least 10 a year in each of all their certificates and degrees. Uh, and the reason for that is if you don't graduate enough people, you can't protect the anonymity of the data. And uh, when you can't do that, you really can't disclose much information to the public. So it's really important to think of gainful employment as a, uh, an, a, the ability to provide consumers information uh, about your program so they can be an informed and prospective buyer or, or make an informed decision on the front end prior to enrolling. So informing our pr prospective students is very important. So as you think about our students, think about uh, what they might look for on our web pages uh, to, to make a good decision as far as whether or not it's, it's, it's worth the uh, time and money and effort to even enroll. Uh, if you go and look at a typical college's website, uh, you might find a little bit of information about the program as far as program description, but uh, oftentimes you, you might find that uh, the other information you're looking for just isn't readily available. So the uh, gainful employment is supposed to help with that. And the typical uh, questions that students would look for are, you know, what type of career will this program lead me to? How much money will I make? How easy will it be for me to get a job? And wouldn't it be frustrating if you couldn't find that information readily? Uh, so if the college doesn't provide that information, then who would? You know, where would you turn? So it's, it's important to... To, for us to be very transparent with the value that our programs provide. So here's another little thing from this MC article. It says, when identifying website content that demonstrates the value of education from an institution, 74% of high school juniors and seniors chose job placement stats as the top response. And uh, when they also try to navigate several college websites, most of them found uh, well, 46% uh, of them found finding the jobs information uh, one of the most difficult things to find. So we'll spend just a little bit of time here navigating gainful employment uh, on our Mesa Community College website, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. So let's go back to the web, so just bear with me as I go back that direction. And here we are back on a program page. You know, and uh, So here we are for a Certificate of Completion and Alteration Specialist. We find that nice description up here, uh, just a little bit of narrative about what that program does. We see some information here on Academic Plan Code. We do see a sequence down here. Uh, course sequencing is required for the Carl Perkins funding of our programs. So that's an uh, important piece. And then down here we see some disclaimer information. And it says that every effort has been made to ensure the accuracy of information presented. Okay, so let's click on this gainful employment disclosure link and see what it says. Okay, so up here, this template uh, that we see on the screen here is a standardized federal template. No matter what college you're at, they all are going to have the same look and feel in that year. 
And so if you want to do comparisons, you could just pull up College A on one screen and College B on the other screen and show the comparisons. So in this uh, particular example with alteration specialist, you'll note that up here it says fewer than 10 students enrolled in the program. This number has been withheld to preserve the confidentiality of students. So if we don't have sufficient enrollment and or graduation, uh, we can't report out a lot of data. So in this situation, although it takes 32 weeks to graduate, we don't have a, enough mass of a uh, number of students doing that to report out how long it's actually taking them to complete. Now we do know the program costs, and so that's all listed here transparently. But again, all these areas here about uh, how much indebtedness students go into, and uh, what their loan payments are and all that kind of uh, information is just not disclosed because we don't have enough students graduating the program. And the same thing with the jobs information. So imagine how frustrating this is. Uh, currently we're doing a lot of cleanup on some of these programs, uh, but it's important to know that the uh, gainful employment is uh, one of the first ways that we can properly advertise our programs. So I just wanted to show you that uh, for every one of our certificates, this information is going to be available. So you can just go to that program of study and click on any of our programs. All right, let's go back to the presentation. And again, if there's any questions about SIP codes, SOC codes, and gainful employment, don't hesitate to contact me or one of your chairs or the curriculum and scheduling office. We'd be happy to spend some more time on this important concept. Uh, in closing, I'd like to just remind you that SIP codes are used to uh, identify what type of academic program you have. They are very useful for determining transfer uh, agreements and that sort of information. And the SOC codes really help identify the next step jobs for students. That They help us quantify salaries so that we can do economic impact studies. And uh, lastly, gainful employment is really about making sure that uh, we have a, a uh, robust enough program to make it worth students' times to invest in. Uh, so uh, think 10 graduates a year as being at least you know, the minimum number of graduates we should have if we're going to continue to sustain any particular certificate or degree. Well, thank you for your time today, and uh, have a great day.